How thick is the bottle on that? <coughs> Down here? Mm -hmm. So this is basically done with that section, so depending on if you have uh, a humid room or a dry room or something like that, it'll take anywhere from 24 hours to 15 minutes to dry out. Like if you guys do heater on in here, it dries out in about an hour where I can have the next section on. About an inch thick, a little less than an inch. It's a, what about the base? Base, it's probably about a half an inch. Yeah, about half an inch. So when I get done, or when it sets up, then I'll come in and I'll trim basically <coughs> half an inch off at the bottom. So it is a lot of trimming, but again, it's how I kind of am able to make something with such a tiny base. So if you're wanting something to have that easy be a little base. <laughs> Throw it a little thicker. That's a beautiful form. I know. Yeah, it's it comes from that small place. To these big bulbous uh, uh, bellies. Um, but anyway, I'll let that set up for a little bit. And you can see how the outside is kind of like me. And it's a little uneven and stuff like that. Just leave it. Um, can we take that in the other room? And put it somewhere sure. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to get one last section on there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting nervous. Ah. <laughs> Thanks, Lavros. Mm -hmm. All right, anything, uh, I've showed you the bottles, I've showed you the alabastrin. Uh, anything you guys want to see as far as uh, a piece made that I would normally make, a bowl, a uh, uh, um, uh, let me give you guys a bowl demo. Uh, a really like wide a, bowl. Like yeah. a really wide bowl? Yeah. I have trouble with it falling in on itself. So. Tie things around. Yeah. Sure. Okay. A lot of clay. Sorry. Got it. <laughs> Alright, bro. <laughs> well, close there, dude. Oh. <laughs> 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 so you notice when I'm uh, when I put it down, I kind of push it into uh, center by kind of coming in and kind of pushing this way. It gets a lot closer to center than if you're uh, just throwing it down because then you don't have to worry about it like throwing your arms all around. So for the bowls that I generally make, you just come in and push that out in the center here. So basically I'm just using that fist, something like so, same basic way that you guys are centering clay, or maybe centering clay. Um, and I'll just come in and kind of start to get that shape. So it's nice and rounded. So I'm just working that clay from the outside to the inside, back to the outside, or inside. Okay. So then it already has that nice sort of round shape to it. Then come in and push that clay up. Would you like a cup of tea or anything like that? Is there any coffee or is there just tea? I don't have any. Oh, that's okay. Um, no, I've got a little Diet Coke right okay. there. So as I'm making my pulls, I'm kind of letting that, uh, throwing it just straight up. Um, and the reason why is if I uh, let this get too far out, when I go to push that clay out from the inside, it'll actually um, push this rim out further. So I actually want to come in and do this last. So I want to push everything else out underneath that first 
and then come and push the rim out or pull the rim out. Same thing with place. Um, <coughs> similar. Similar. Yeah. Plates are a little bit different. I try to pull them as close to a, a really shallow bowl as possible. Um, I have a really, really hard time with plates like bowing up for the rims as I'm throwing them, but, or as they're drying. Um, I'll have them so they have a nice curve. I'll come back the next morning, and that whole rim's pulled up about half an inch. And so, um, plates I just try to throw as flat as possible, uh, and then come in and just do minor touches. Uh, then it doesn't pull up as much. I also try to flip them as early as possible. So right now I'm kind of pushing out from the inside. And again, I'm leaving that rim really, really thick. Um, you can thin that out later, but if you, just like a, a cup or anything else, if you leave that rim a little thicker, you have a little bit more control with the rest of the clay, and then just kind of finish that up last. And then I just come in with the like a rib with a... You guys haven't picked up any of these in your ceramics major? Get some. They're awesome. Um, you never have to cut your fingers or uh, um, they have different thick, uh, firmnesses. Uh, so for like something like a bowl where I want it to stay very rigid, uh, it helps with that. Um, so you can have different flex kind of... Uh, yeah, different rigid, different yeah, different colors have uh, different... Uh, okay. Um, different amounts of flexibility. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically pushing that clay out from the inside. So just come down to the bottom. And I want to try and maintain that roundedness in the bottom of the bowl. And I'm just basically trying to work that up to the top of the rim there. And I'm not pulling it through the rim. And this can serve as both a casserole or a um, or just a, like a fruit bowl or salad bowl. Once I got that done, then I'll come back out to the outside, clean it up just a smidge. And then I can come in here, to, uh, basically, uh, what is that, four and eight. I can just open that up a little bit to whatever sort of dimension you want. If you just pull one one side, it's going to take a lot longer and it's a little bit harder. So if you come with two points, it's make it a little bit easier. But again, now that I've done that, you can see how uh, how less exaggerated that that bow is, or that uh, curve in the bowl is. So, and it's a lot trickier to push back in. Right. So. And then there's a ton of clay down on the bottom, so it's just a lot of trimming. Um, in the inside, it's about half an inch. If I come out to the outside here, it's about an inch and a half. Wow, well, an inch, about an inch and a half. Uh, so, and I think that was one of the things that I learned most from China was trim. You can trim anything into anything as long as you have kind of a rough shape. Mm -hmm. um, you can make it as uh, any shape you want to after the trimming part. But Tom told me they had people that just trim. Mm -hmm. sure. They do. Uh, like everything is uh, basically broken up into individual jobs. Mm -hmm. So you have one guy that wedges, you have one guy that throws, you have one guy that trims, you have one guy that uh, makes the clay, you have one guy that glazes the clay, you have one guy that paints the clay, you have somebody who fires the clay, uh, you have somebody who kind of picks up the pots. You have, I mean, it's crazy because all you have to do is basically just throw. Mm -hmm. and it's amazing how little uh, it costs to get them to throw you stuff. <laughs> like a big jar or something, like, yeah, yay big. Uh, to throw it, about three quad, which is 50 cents. Uh, to trim it, I think they charge 50 cents. Um, it might go up a little bit. I don't know how inflation's uh, mm -hmm. working so far. Um, like the decorator usually gets uh, about 100 quad, which is about $15. And then I don't know how it breaks down throughout the rest of the firings and stuff. But gas is way more expensive over there. 
so that is something that uh, is not as uh, cheap as here. Hmm. So something like that I would leave on a bat. And just might try and pull this off. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're, there was a Betty Woodman that used to do that. She'd make these big plates and she'd pick it up by the side and then plop it down and they would never work. Um, crazy. Um, last but not least, how about we uh, do a little mug and then um, uh, trim up a couple of these guys. What time are we pushing? Um, we're for two. Ah, so we got plenty of time. Don't forget your mom's hate.